Today on CityCast Salt Lake, lead producer Emily Means joins me to break down the biggest headlines in our weekly news roundup. Here's what you might have missed. It's Friday, January 12th, 2023. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Emily Means, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Ali Vallarta. Some big news this week. Well, we have breaking news. We're, we're, hey, congratulations, guys. Uh, we're going to Utah. Oh, wow. Oh. Knives Out 3 in Salt Lake City. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, wow. All right, that Ryan great. Johnson. Should you be so lucky? <laughs> How dare you, sir? We saw the look on your face. You're not excited to bring your third movie of the Knives Out franchise to Salt Lake City? First of all, Salt Lake City is good enough for plenty of fancy people, okay? So it would be an excellent Knives Out location. Lindsay Lohan came here, okay? You think you're better than Lindsay Lohan? Right, exactly. Ryan? Yeah, okay? Gail Ryan Miller with could live I? anywhere. <laughs> Here's what I want to say to you, Ryan Johnson. Knives Out was excellent. It launched the career of Ana de Armas, who in turn relaunched the career of Ben Affleck, who in turn married Jennifer Lopez. We wouldn't have had any of that without you, Ryan Johnson. Knives Out 2 Glass Onion, a total stinker. We don't need Knives Out 3. We have the White Lotus now. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. All right, let's get into things that are actually happening in our city. All right, fine. After three years in a COVID-19 state of emergency, Salt Lake County Health Department has declared that that state of emergency is over. Now, to be clear, this is not Dr. Angela Dunn and Mary Jenny Wilson saying that COVID is over. What they are saying is daily operations are more than adequate for managing this pandemic from here on out. We enjoyed our $478 million in federal funding. Now that money's driving, drying up, and we're going to get back to business as usual. Thank you for that clarification, Allie. COVID is not over. Reflecting back on the past three years, Allie, and a quick walk down memory lane, I was at, I think, the very first emergency COVID briefing. Mm. Uh, It was in the bowels of the Utah State Capitol, and it was kind of like our first introduction to Dr. Angela Dunn, who at the time was the state epidemiologist. And... Wow. Yeah. Like was that we didn't we just didn't know what we were in for. Would that have been right after the jazz COVID sort of scandal? The Rudy Gobert thing. I think it was actually even before Mm. that. I think it was like, look, we're starting to see this thing spread. It's in New York. Uh, You know, we're seeing it in China. Like, we need to be prepared. And yeah, it was scary. And, uh, you know, that's probably one word to sum up the past three years of this. But uh, I really appreciate Dr. Dunn's leadership on this when she was with the state. And, you know, I was excited to have her join Salt Lake County as the executive director of the health department. But uh, yeah, what a wild time. Wild ride indeed. Yeah. And let's not forget like an important, I think, important piece of this story, which is that one of the reasons that Dr. Dunn joined the Salt Lake County Health Department is because when she was the state epidemiologist, people were so mad about being asked to wear masks that they doxed her and protested outside of her personal home where she and her family live. And so like this has been a real journey for for this particular professional, as well as all of the Utahns that have lost family members, that have lost their jobs. Like, we've just really been through it together. And so, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't actually have, like, very strong feelings about this declaration. And I think that's partly because she is a public health professional that I really trust. Yeah. And also, it, it feels, like, very administrative, you yeah. know, like, okay, yeah, we're, this is over on a paper, mm-hmm. right? And we're not going to be receiving any more federal funding for this. But one thing I did want to note, I was looking at the county's COVID dashboard, which is still up and running. Only 12% of eligible Salt Lake County residents are up to date on their COVID vaccines and boosters. Do you know that, Allie? 12%. No. This is a big county. 
Okay. Yeah. There is a lot of ground to be made up there. 1.2 million people to, to be sure. Yeah. They have a map with the vaccine coverage and there is still a lot of work to be done on the west side of the valley. So um, the county health department says they'll still be holding vaccine clinics, still trying to, you know, bring the most vulnerable people up to date on their boosters. Yeah. But this is a reminder and a plea to please, please get your booster shot. You can get it for free. You can get it for free. Yeah. So you can do it next time you get groceries. I did mine at Harmon's. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Okay. Let's talk about some city news. We got pedestrian news. By the way, Allie, welcome to your car free, car light life. Thank you. Are you regretting making that decision? <laughs> it's just a month. It's just a month, though. So it's a good test run for you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. So we recorded the episode where I agreed to go car light for a month. And then the next day, it sleeted in Salt Lake City. <laughs> basically all night it's sleeted and hailed thanks atmospheric river yeah and so that was sort of a rough introduction but I'm gonna find a way to have fun doing it and hopefully be safe because one of my biggest anxieties as we've discussed is like how dangerous these streets are for pedestrians absolutely and that is what Salt Lake City Mayor Erin Mendenhall was talking about this week she, when she announced the city is joining the Vision Zero network this is the first I had ever heard about Vision Zero but basically what they're saying is that traffic violence doesn't have to happen Imagine that, a world where people aren't being hit by cars or, you know, there aren't collisions between cars mm-hmm. and, and pedestrians and cyclists. So what they're doing is moving away from traffic violence as an inevitability and changing their mindset to something where this is actually preventable. So this is really important because, Allie, there were 26 traffic deaths last year in Salt Lake City. That's according to the Salt Lake City police. That's a lot of people. And I think this is something that we were hopefully already on a path to. We've got the Livable Streets program here in Salt Lake where they're working on traffic calming, working on people going slower and, you know, building roads that support that. So this seemed like a really natural evolution of that to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly interested in a vision and a plan, and this is both of those things. And I often feel like when we're tackling things in this city, we either have a plan but no vision or a vision but no plan. That's one of my biggest criticisms, I think, of Salt Lake City Corporation. So re-engineering the city to make driving less destructive as opposed to expecting drivers to just be less destructive seems Mm -hmm. like a good way forward. First of all, buy-in from the state and county would really elevate this strategy Mm. because the state is responsible for some of our most frightening roads like 4th South, State State Street, Street, Hello, Redwood Road, 7th East. Like these are some of the big like I don't know, basically they feel like mini highways through the city. And so if the state isn't bought in to Vision Zero, then Mm -hmm. we still have to deal with those thoroughfares being kind of frightening. And then the other thing is like, I would have loved to have seen this as a joint resolution between all the mayors in Salt Lake County. Mm, That would have sent a nice message. It really would have, right? And like when we think about growth in the county, South Salt Lake is getting a main street, right? Midvale's got their downtown, which is kind of popping off. Mill Creek Commons, like these bedroom communities of Salt Lake City are growing and they are also places where people want to be pedestrians. And there are places where like the planning of what the downtown is is happening right now in real time. So implementing this kind of engineering from the get go could be really awesome. I don't know. I'd love to see this be like a countywide effort. I would have loved to have seen Mary Jenny Wilson there. I would have loved to see more than just the SLCPD, right? Right. And maybe this is something that the state will get on board with. I mean, they talked a lot about the traffic violence we experienced last year. You know, we're moving away from the term accident now because it do- it's not an accident, right. right? You dot talked a lot about, you know, the collisions we saw on I-15, the like record speeding that we saw there. So maybe this is something that they'll get on board with eventually. But, you know, sooner is better than later. Honestly. On that note, I have to ask, did you see the story about Dale Brady? No. Okay. Tell me about this. 
I just thought this was like the sweetest thing ever. So there was a story this week about a UTA bus driver named Dale Brady, who on December 29th crossed a milestone that I believe the article said was a national milestone, which is 4 million traffic violence free miles behind the wheel as a UTA bus driver. Oh, He's been driving for UTA since April 1976. And he has put in 4 million miles and not been in an accident. Thank you for your service, Dale. Right? Allie, this is a really great reason to use public transit because the people who are driving these buses are professionals. And they have to put in, you know, I don't know how many hours before they're like actually official bus drivers. I would trust my life with Any UTA bus driver. Thanks, Dale. Dale has been driving for most of UTA's, like, 52-year history. What a legend. Hey, Salt Lake, it's Allie. An analyst at the Chem C. Gardner Policy Institute predicted that in 2023, Utah home prices will have dropped 9% from last year. If he's right, then first time home buyers, we are headed in the right direction. Now is the time to start making a plan. And since you're a podcast listener, might I recommend the How to Buy a Home podcast? The folks at How to Buy a Home are first time home buyer authorities. They've got a full toolkit for starting your home buying journey, from defining terms to calculating what you can actually afford. And when the time is right, they can even connect you with a great Salt Lake realtor who won't blow you off. Start planning at howtobuyahome.com and make this the last year you rent. Find How to Buy a Home on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay, and before we go, there is one more story that I want to talk about, and I'm going to try and make it quick, but I'm kind of obsessed with it, so bear with me. I'm with you. Okay, we're going to leave Salt Lake City for a minute, and then I'm going to tell you why. We're going to go to the furthest southeast corner of Utah, to the Navajo Nation, where this week they swore in a new president. And for anyone who has never been to the Navajo Nation or like even as far as Bluff, Utah, yes, we're talking like me. further than that's Moab. Me. you never been to Bluff? No. I don't have a car, Allie. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I guess I don't either. I guess I won't be going to Bluff anytime soon. Okay. So the Navajo Nation is, of course, a sovereign tribal nation. It overlaps with New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. And the smallest portion of the Navajo Nation is in Utah. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Like, It is still a portion of this tribal nation. And this week they swore in a new president, Boo Nigren, who broke three records in being sworn in. Ready for him? Yeah. President Boo Nigren is half Vietnamese, and he is now the youngest person to ever hold the office of president of the Navajo Nation. He is 36 years old. Wow. His vice president, Michelle Montoya, is the first woman to hold either vice presidency or presidency of the Navajo Nation. And they also swore in all the Navajo Nation council members, which is a one-third female majority, which also breaks a record. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, sounds like a a powerhouse of administrators. Right. It's fascinating. And also, let's just go ahead and compare it with our state and federal like elected administrations, oh, those numbers, right? Like very different situation. This is a populist candidate who beat out an incumbent kind of business as usual president, Jonathan Nez. And another thing that I think is really interesting about Dr. Nigren is that he was raised on the Utah portion of the Navajo Nation. So he's a Utah, mm. which I think is pretty cool given that it is the smallest portion. And so this is something that I think should be on every Salt Laker's radar. And here's why. And I know that like generally on this show, you know, we're we're hyper local here. We talk about the city. But I do think that tribal politics are really important. And obviously we are on native land, right? The Navajo Nation is the largest land area held by a tribe in the United States. Despite the enormous role, of course, of the tribes and like indigenous ancestry in the West, I think that these stories are 
very underreported. Yeah. And so I also think something that we talk about a lot on this show is the ecological future of living in the West, right? And when we think about, for example, like the Great Salt Lake, one of the most exciting things happening with the crisis at the Great Salt Lake is the ecological restoration of the Bear River, which is its largest tributary, Mm -hmm. by the northwestern band of Shoshone in southern Idaho, right? Like the federal Biden administration just signed a co-management plan for Bears Ears National Monument with the tribes. Like Western states are turning to indigenous wisdom when it comes to issues of land, air, and water. And so leaders of these sovereign nations, like the Navajo Nation, I think are going to play a really important role in the ecological future of the West. And for that reason alone, aside from all the other obvious reasons that we should just know what's kind of politically happening in our state, I think it's really important to keep our eyes on Dr. Nigren. Yeah. Thanks for making those connections for us, Allie. I am one of those Salt Lakers who doesn't know a lot about tribal affairs. Yeah. One thing that I do think is kind of interesting, you know, my background is in political reporting, talking about the state capital. From my perspective, the Cox administration has seem to have made way more of an effort to connect with indigenous communities than previous administrations. Yeah, I mean, the bar is very, very low. (laughs) It's very, very low. I saw that they actually congratulated the new president. We've seen Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson Mm -hmm. down in southeastern Utah talking with tribal leaders. So I think that that is a hopeful step for us. But Yeah, like you said, the bar is low and uh, we would all be better off to be better informed about this. Yep. I think it's just like good to be oriented. And yeah, I think it's really cool that a portion of the Navajo Nation overlaps with Utah and that it's an opportunity. So yeah, that's that's a story that I was really interested in this week. But of course, we are headed into the weekend. What are you doing this weekend, Emily? Allie, I'm actually really excited for the Save Our Great Salt Lake rally on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to a a good old-fashioned rally in quite a while. I used to cover them as a reporter, but it's been a long time since I've just been able to be with people and rallying around a cause. Mm -hmm. So that is Saturday at noon at the Capitol. There will be a coffee truck there if you need it, like me, because I'll probably have just woken up like an hour (laughs) before that. Before (laughs) noon? Yeah, you know, I like my weekends. If I could, I would sleep until, I would sleep until like 11 a.m. every day. But one thing I'm really excited for is the art. There was this incredible, like, art build that they did last week, you know, for posters and things like that. And I just really think Save Our Great Salt Lake always nails it on the art front. Oh, yeah. I mean, their, like, Artists for Great Salt Lake campaign has produced some truly beautiful stuff. Like, worth framing in your house kind of posters. Yeah. Yeah. You might see me in my brine shrimp head. I don't know. Watch for antennas. Allie, what are you doing this weekend? Well, they are petitioning again to make the brine shrimp the state crustacean. So if you go up there in your brine shrimp costume, know that it will be a political act. This weekend, Emily, I am turning 32. (gasps) Happy birthday, Allie. Thank you. Looking forward to it. The 30s are incredible. Wouldn't do my 20s again for a million dollars. I will be celebrating my birthday out of town. But if I were in town, I would go to this winter market that they're doing at the All Together Skate Park. I don't skate, but I think it's fun to watch people skate. And do you know the like Evo campus in the Granary District? It's like that kind of corner brick building. Yeah, probably. EVO. Okay, so this I'm going to have to do some exploring. Okay, so there's a skate park in there, an indoor skate park, and it's called the All Together Skate Park. And on Saturday from 1 to 5, so you could swing by after the rally, they are doing like a free open skate. They're going to have local art vendors, and they're also doing a drive for unsheltered neighbors. And I really appreciate when people are doing – Drive, like collection drives when they're very specific. And this one is mm-hmm. very specific. What do they want? They want socks and they want tampons. So swing by, grab some socks, get a thing of tampons or pads and bring them by and contribute to this collection that they're doing. And maybe like, I don't know, maybe lace up some skates or get on the skateboard. All right, Emily, 
It was great spending this time with you. Have a great weekend. I will see you on Tuesday. Thanks for breaking down the news with me, Allie. See you Tuesday. Bye. That's all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Our lead producer is Emily Means. Our producer is Ivana Martinez. Our newsletter editor is Teri Noria, and our host is me, Ali Vallarta. Music is by the local band Mitochondria. It is a long weekend for us in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We'll be back Tuesday morning with more from around this city. Have a great weekend.